I just want to say to somebody that God will avenge you. God will avenge the wrongs and things that's been done to you. Sometimes people, they feel like, oh, I see this person and nothing is happening to them. This has happened and, and it, seem, it seems as if this person's moved on with their lives and they're doing great things and they look so happy and here I am hurting. God is not doing anything. You have to know that when God moves and when God is getting ready to do the things that he is doing, it does not necessarily always, it's not always going to be the way that you think it's going to be. Sometimes you don't see it. There's a way that in your mind you may think it's going to happen and you see it's not happening. It seems like, oh, it's taken all these years. It's taken all this time. But God gives people a bunch of just unmerited favor and grace and we don't understand it. But you must realize that God is going to avenge you. God is going to wrong the rights or right the wrongs that has been done to you. I'm going to give you an example. When David, David was a king and he was loved by God and God had placed him in a high position. David was king. He had riches. He had so many things, but he saw Uriah's wife. He saw Bathsheba. And so with everything that he already had and the Lord had blessed him with, David decided that I want her. And he knew he had the power to go and get her. Now, we don't know what Bathsheba's position was, but she probably was not able to say no to David. Maybe she willingly said yes, but there's also a possibility, guys, that she had no sort of say in the matter. She just had to go to see the king and lay with the king. That may have been it. We don't know. But what I will say to you is this. David had everything already. God had blessed him. But somewhere in David's mind, he felt that he also had a right to have Uriah's wife. Now, he knew he was wrong for it, but he had the power and the resources because he sent the servant that God gave to him based on the position he had as king. He used his resources to sin against God. First of all, before he got back, before he sinned against Uriah, he sinned against God. So he used the resources that was given to him. He used the power that God had given to him when he was just bringing up the cart with the cheese and the loaves to his brother. And now he's in up and God moved him from that to being in a position of power and authority with a crown on his head. He used that to 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 satisfy his lust and his desire. He also used his power and resources to kill Uriah. Because he sent Uriah with the letter in hand to give to, uh, I believe it was jo Joab, give to his nephew, to give to David's nephew to tell him. And the heat of the battle put Uriah to the front. So he uses power and his ability and the influence and what God has given, given to him to not only lay with someone's wife, but to also murder him because he realized he could not get Uriah to go and lay with Bathsheba. Bathsheba was pregnant. So what David started to do was he started to think and he started to, 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 to connive. And so what he wanted to do was plant his baby on Uriah by saying, calling Uriah back from the field and saying, from the battle and saying, Uriah, go and, and lay with your wife because that was going to be the plan. But Uriah would not lay with her because he's saying, how can I go in and lay with my wife when in fact, my, all my fellow comrades are out there are not able to lay with their own wife. He had that level of loyalty guys. He had a level of loyalty to David. He had that level of loyalty to the Lord. Because even when David thought he had gotten him drunk enough, he came and he opened his door. And he saw Uriah laying down at his doorstep sleeping. This was a level of loyalty that Uriah had to the king and to God that he would not lay with his wife. But also, guys, God was not going to allow Uriah to be caught up in that entanglement and in that deception. So he did not allow him to go and lay with his wife. Even in all the, the alcohol that he had and he was drunk, the Lord still kept him in that peace of mind. God kept him so he would not go and lay with her. And then now he is entrapped. Don't you know that sometimes when people are trying to trap you, when that woman is trying to trap you with that baby, that's not yours. When your wife is trying to deceive you, you're going to find out. When your husband is trying to deceive you in some way, you're going to find out God is going to keep you and he's going to sustain you when you're loyal to him. And when you are a loyal wife and you've been a faithful wife, a loyal and a faithful husband and a loyal and a faithful friend, a loyal and a faithful employee, and that person uses their power and ability to, and their power and their position to do you wrong. 
Although it may seem as if you've been slain at that moment, God is going to avenge you. You see, Uriah never got to see. Uriah never got to see the vengeance. He didn't even know that someone had betrayed him. Don't you know that even when you don't know what's going on behind your back, that God's got you. He's going to take care of you. Uriah was slain and you may not be physically slain, but sometimes things has happened to you. This person has betrayed your trust. They use their power and authority and ability and all of that to take from you and to betray you and to do all types of stuff. But even though you may think you you may never see it. It doesn't mean it's gonna not. It's not gonna happen because Uriah never saw the blood that was in David's house all his days from generation to generation because of the sins of Uriah. Correction: because of the sin against Uriah. The Bible always called Bathsheba Uriah's wife. She was never called David's wife. She was never called the wife of the king. She was always Uriah's wife, even though she had repented, even though David had repented, the child that was within her womb died. The Lord did not allow it to happen. That sin, it was sin. It was not going to happen. And so guys, I want you to know that even though Uriah never saw it and he didn't know what happened, the Lord received his spirit and he avenged him even after death. So I want you to know if you're in the grave, you never see it. God is still going to move. God is not impressed by authority and positions. So he's not going to say, well, this person is richer than this one. So he has a right to hurt him. You're better looking than this person. So you have a right to, to, to take her husband and to take his wife. You're in a higher position. So you're in a position you're in. You have the right to take from this individual because after all the things that you've done to help them, they should be able to turn a blind eye to this. God is going to hold those who are in positions, those who are rich those who are wealthy, those who he has put blessings in their hands. He's placed them in positions and they use those positions of authority and power to hurt people, to take from them, to take the little that they had, to lay with their wives and their husband. God is going to do something. God is going to avenge them. God is going to avenge you. God doesn't sleep. God's not mocked. Whatever a person reaps, Whatever they sow, they're going to reap. If you plant apple seed, you can plant an apple seed. You're going to get an apple tree. It means there's going to be more than what you did to that person that comes back to you. You planted one seed, but you're about to get an apple that's going to bear about how many fruits all at one time. And it's going to continue to bear and bear and bear and bear. Oh, but what about forgiveness? God, won't he forgive us? There's sins. There's some sins, sins guys. The Lord will forgive you and there are things God will forgive you. It's one and done. It's over with. And he says, don't do it. But these sins where people just do it a lot and they just are habitual perps. They are habitual spiritual felons and they love, they, they just go from, you know, aggravated assault to misdemeanors to, to being a serial killer spiritually and doing all these different things and being spiritual felons. When they, I'm trying to explain to you that when God gets ready to avenge, that person is going to get back what they've done, even when they've asked for forgiveness, because there's certain things, it must be justified. God God is not God if he's not going to take care of that crying widow or, or take care of that crying mother, that crying son, that crying wife that's been betrayed. He's now gone to drinking and, and, and everybody's come. Everyone's going to focus now. This person that's, that's done her husband wrong is going to focus on, oh, look at him. He's angry and he's drinking. This is why I did what he did. No, this man is in pain and this is the only way he can express himself. Doesn't make it right. No, but God sees in the midst of that chaotic behavior, the pain he knows what you did. Oh, that husband will go and paint that wife or that man will go paint a picture of the person that he's with. Oh, you see this? She's this one. That's why I just can't deal with her. And this is why she did this. And this is why I did that. But he saw what you did. He saw your secret phone calls. He saw that you were beating her. He saw that you insulted her. He saw that you crushed her spirit. He saw that you were neglectful and you rejected her. He saw what you said to her. And he knows why she is in pain. He knows why she's screaming and ranting and raving. He knows why this woman that was quiet 
quiet has now become a cantankerous wife. That's the type of wife that you want to go live on the house stop rather than be with her. But now this is your excuse to go hop into a new relationship with somebody else and say, see, this is what I did. And the undiscerning people, the undiscerning church is going to look at her and say, oh, my brother, I'm so sorry about what happened. Oh, she's a Jezebel. She's this. No, but God sees what has happened. Is her behavior justified? No, but God sees and knows her pain. He knows her behavior. He knows the crease in her face, the, 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 the sharp behavior, the way she answers. It's not because she was always this way, but now she's gone into war mode because she has been wounded and impaled many times with a sword when she was trusting and soft and docile and at her back turn. You see, God sees all of that. And so he will avenge her. He's not going to ignore her. He's not going to ignore somebody because they're not a Christian. If you as a Christian went out and you did something to a sinner. You did something to them that was wrong. You did something to them that was evil. You took from them. You stole their ideas. You stole the blueprints of the things that they were doing. You took over their business. You let them do all the groundwork and then you took stuff from them and you used your ability and your influence to get people who had power because you had lawyers in your church and you had police and you had politicians in your pockets because of the position that God put you in and you used them to intimidate and take and do some underhanded stuff and forge some paperwork and take something from somebody you think because that person is unsaved God's not gonna do nothing you still did wrong you think because this person was born out of wedlock that you, what you did to them is going to go away? No, God sees it and he's going to avenge them because even in David's house, there was a perpetual sword because of the wrong that he did to Uriah, who was way lower as far as in position physically uh, or in the natural. But with God, that is a soul. Uriah is a soul. Uriah is a unique creation. That was his unique handy work that David felt that he could destroy because he wanted to cover his tracks. Now, David didn't want to kill Uriah. He just thought he's going to do what he's going to do. And he, his pleasure just made him do what he felt like doing. And he just thought, well, he didn't think anything else, but the consequences, the seed came forward. You see, the seed came ahead. The seed came the seed of that sin began to sprout in her stomach. And now he's trying to kill it. He wants to get, he, oh, oh, you're right. Go in there and go lay down with her. Go do this. What would that, what would that mean as far as their, their, their culture and their, and, and them as a Jewish people? What an abomination. What an insult it is for David to have thought for Uriah to go lay with his wife who he has contaminated and slept with and now has planted a seed in her. What a... Oh, what an atrocity. What a thing. But that's the thing. When you sin and you do wrong, you get desperate and crazy. And the the, the things that you normally wouldn't do, you're going to do it. These people are going to do it. And so it began to give birth. And he's trying to get rid of, of the evidence. So he started to do more and more. And it didn't work. And so he got rid of Uriah. But God eventually said, okay, this child, I'm taking the soul back. This child would not be. But I want you to know that people, regardless of their positions, regardless of the amount of money that they have, regardless of who they have around them, regardless of the entourage and who they can call up to do things to the less fortunate, God sees it, God hears it, and he's going to avenge it and it's going to happen. And a lot of times these things end up coming into their own house because there was a lot of David's sons that died because of what David did. And why? Because when you're sinning and you do things wrong, there's a, there is a seed of wickedness that sprouts up because of sin. Sin keeps giving and giving and giving and giving. You think that you're just going to do this one sin right here and that's it. But no, that's going to spring up. And that's why you have to pray. You ask God to forgive you. But some things, guys, is going to keep going because depending on what you have done, that thing must be avenged. Sometimes, yes, you're going to go through the ramifications of things that you've done. But what God may do is give you the mercy and grace that you don't get the full brunt of what was supposed to come. Some of you, you're supposed to be dead. Some of you, because of what you did, you're supposed to be killed. You're supposed to be martyred and brutalized and your, your body parts spread all over the land. That's what the devil 
was trying to bring to you, but instead God just allow exposure and shame and some, some things to happen and you got to learn from it. Some of you, you went to jail. Some people went to jail for what they did and they were in there. They, their freedom was taken. They were supposed to get 52 to 80 years, but God allowed it where the judge just gave them 10 years. Some people are supposed to get 10, 15. The Lord allowed it where you only got five. You're supposed to get five to 10. And the Lord had allowed it where you only got two. So when you get God's grace and mercy, when you almost got caught, when you got busted and when things get exposed, this is what I want to say to these people. Don't act up when God exposes you for your wrong. Don't try to capitalize and switch it and change it because something worse is going to happen. You didn't learn that lesson. You couldn't humble yourself under the humbling hand of God. You want to curse people out and turn the table and try to deflect from what you've done. Now God is going to do something completely different and worse than what you would have had and learned from. This thing that could have just, you would have learned from it and moved on. God's going to do something worse. There are times where God will bring exposure and cause certain things to happen for you to learn from it. But if these people don't learn and they continue to just harden their heart against, they know they did this wrong thing. They know that God is right in his judgment, but because they, because of their pride, they continue to deflect and turn things around. God is going to bring something harder. He's going to bring something harder and harder and harder. And especially those who they don't learn. They had a near miss. They almost lost their family. Things happen. They almost got in a car accident. They don't learn anything. They just continue going and going and going. But I want you to know that God is going to avenge you. And what you need to do, I would encourage you not to be obsessed with seeing evil done to that person, because if you act like them, you're going to just by default, you're going to pick up that same weakness. You're going to be tied. It's like you're tethered to them. It's like you're tethered to them. You're just holding on. They got their hooks in you. The offense that they did, you're tethered to them. And now it becomes something where it breeds wickedness within you and hate within you because you're mad because, okay, this man left you and you look and now they got married and everything. Everything looks like it's going good and God's blessing them and they have beautiful kids and this happened and this happened. You get angry and you say, God, I thought you was going to do something, but you and I do not have the authority to say how God is going to move and what he's going to do. And your thing is now to allow the Lord to deal with the hurt and the pain and what they've done in you at, to the point that you're healed and you're restored because God is going to move. But you don't want to be a person that you're wishing, oh, I hope this happened to them. I hope they die. No, because now it's sin and God's going to start looking at you too because God hates sin. If you're allowing, if you're to the point that you're so obsessed and you're bitter and you're hateful and you're mad at God and you're watching the clock, guys, you're operating in sin and you have to ask the Lord to help you because those seeds of hurt within you is becoming bitterness and bitterness is going to make you hope and wish that something happened to him. You're going to be mad at God. You're going to be just irritated when there's blessings and you're going to find yourself being obsessed. You're always going to be looking over the fence to see what they're doing. You're not healed. And it's not because God can't heal you, but this becomes your vengeance and your hurt becomes your God. And you don't want that to happen. God is going to handle those who have used their power and authority to hurt. God is going to use his, God is going to avenge you for that, that man that left you for that woman. God is going to avenge you for that woman that left you for that other man. God is going to avenge you for those who stole from you, those who took from you, those who lied on you, those who made people think that you were crazy, those who made up stories about you, those who told that half of the truth they focused on how you reacted. And so now you're this abusive husband. She's always been hitting you. And this woman's always been abusive to you and doing you wrong and doing you dirty. And she's always doing things. And the minute you just tell her to get off of you, you push her off of you. She called the police and filed, filed charges against you and got a restraining order against you. And you can't see your children. There's some people that's made up stories about you and said that you were molesting your children and you never did. They just want to lie. They didn't want you to be around the child. They were people that you, 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 you are so afraid to even be around your own child anymore more because, and you probably have resentment towards your child because they use a child to lie on you and the child is confused and the child is just in this place. But I want you to know whoever you are listening to me, 
not to be angry at that child because that child don't know what to do. That child is in a position where they're being influenced and being vulnerable. And that person, an adult has the ability, you just giving the child a bath, but the adult has a way to put their own perverted, sick thoughts into the child of the mind, the mind of the child and tell the child, well, did they wash down there? And how long did they wash? And did you feel like this? Did he put this? Did she do that? And before you know it, the child's confused and just saying yes, but all the child just knows is that I got a bath, but now this person has made it that you touched them and you rubbed this and you did this longer and you had your hand down here longer. And there's people who has lived with that. They are now, uh, they, they now have to register as sex offenders and they did nothing but that wife or husband wanted to make sure that they got, they got full custody of the children and wouldn't have to worry about that parent. Sometimes it is the wife or the other woman who has married the husband wants to completely get you out of the picture. It could be that man wants to come who's married your wife now. And they want to get you completely out of the, the picture or marry the person that you have a child with to get you out of the picture. And so they make up all these things. Oh, God is not blind and he's going to do something about it. Oh my gosh, you may feel like it's all over for you, that they've gotten away with it, but God says vengeance is mine. Though it tarries, it will come. Though it tarries, it will come. And no matter who aids and abets them, and no matter how far down they try to dig a hole and hide it, and no matter how high of a tower they may try to build to hide the truth, God is God and it will be discovered and they will but they will experience the wrath of God. God will avenge you even if you don't see it. Uriah never got to see anything. Uriah didn't even know what had happened. He didn't even know. He'd been set up. And sometimes you may feel, you know, wow, but God's got you. You got to trust him. There's a reason why God gives people so much mercy and so much grace because when his wrath comes down, it's going to be horrible. If that person is taken, they go to the grave with that mess in their heart and keep that mess going when they are in utter darkness and screaming what they will see running in their mind. One of the things that will be brought to them is what they did to you. Sometimes people's, sometimes people's punishments, guys, you may never see in this life. And sometimes you do, but other times guys, what they did, God is like, no, there's nothing on this earth that is going to be able to wrong what they did what they did they must experience eternal damnation and torture and torment for what they did to you and I'm not gonna say don't rejoice guys because if we ever had a glimpse to see what's happening to some people you even you would have compassion on that person you can't imagine it but you can't imagine the level of torment that that person will go through and they're not going to ever be able to get out of there. God's not blind. God's not dead. God's not sleep. God's not medicated. He is not senile. He's not been around so old. He's just senile and don't know. You can't kick the cane from under his feet. He's not in a wheelchair being let and the, the, the wheelchair is going down the hill out of control and the angels is flapping behind him, trying to get him and trying to remind him, Lord, God, remember this. Did you take your medication, God? That's not how he is. He is keen and he knows exactly what's happened. And what happened with a lot of these people is they go on and they do evil and they do wrong and they try to build goodness on it. They start to donate and they, they start to do things in the, in the area and they get into church and they start stuff and they do all these different things and they educate themselves and they start to do things because they want to cover that dead corpse in them. What they're not going to do is tell the truth on where they hid the body but they try to build up another image and try to make themselves look so good. And so you're looking at this facade and you're looking at the stuff that they're building up and everybody that's around them and how whole, how it looks so sweet. And you look like you're on the outside looking like that little Fox meme that they have going around sitting on the chair by yourself, looking all dry and alone. But I want you to know that God has not forgotten you. God is not blind. He is going to avenge you. He's going to avenge you for the violation 
situations that's been done to you. He's going to avenge you for the lies that's been told on you. He's going to avenge. He's going to avenge you and, and get vengeance for that person that walked out and left you, walked out, who raped you and nobody believed you. He's going to avenge you for that person that, uh, that sexually assaulted you when you were a little boy, that man that sexually assaulted you, that woman that sexually assaulted you, that parent, that, that uncle, nobody believed you. You still had to live with this person and may have been subjected to them constantly and things happen. Those that laughed at you, those that walked away from you, that person that was more wealthier than you, that woman that was more wealthier and shapelier that came and just got your husband and took him by the hand like he was a kid. No, he's, he willingly left. I want you to stop saying she stole my husband or he stole my wife. The first thing that you need to know is the truth. Stop pampering them and aiding and abetting them. They chose to leave you. It had nothing to do with their shape. It had nothing to do with how great the sex was. It had everything to do with the character of that man or woman that you was with and so they just paired and they just fused with what they were already were on the inside because you as a woman or a man you know that you can see somebody that's fine and that's good good looking and you're not going to go lay with them because of your character because of the level of loyalty that you have for them so you need to start to be honest with yourself and stop saying she stole him he's not no little kid she didn't kidnap him and abduct him there was conversations there were time and there were plenty your warnings in between, but he chose to ignore that. She chose to ignore the warnings. She chose to ignore the red flags. She did what she wanted to do. So the first thing you need to do to set yourself free is to stop blaming that other man or that other woman. You don't need to pick up the phone and get into arguments with her because there could be no her unless he wanted to be there. There could be no him unless she wanted to be there. And so you got to realize that God sees all of it. He sees the lies that's been told. He sees how your idea was taken. He sees how this person continues to make money off of your ideas. He sees and knows that pastor that you trusted with your ideas and showed him your patents, how he talked you into letting him to, to buy your patent and, and sell it to him. And he's going to do this and do that. And he stole it or she stole it. He sees the mess. He sees how they have helped this man to divorce you right under your nose because they had the money to get a lawyer and somebody big and better to get you out of the way and to make you look crazy. He saw how they used people who had positions and authority who were in offices. He used them. How, how they, this pastor, this person who's in a high position was able to use these people that were in their corner. They used the, the, the assets and the things that the Lord blessed them with to hurt somebody else. Oh, God didn't set them in positions to hunt and destroy people, but that's what many people do. They hunt. God put them on high and they start to hunt. God put them in position. They start to hunt and make prey out of people, make sport out of people. But I want you to know that God saw, God sees what they've done. See how the supervisors, everybody got people to write statements that were lies against you. So you can lose your job because you stood up for Christ or they just didn't like you or they just had a bad feeling about you. And so they just did what they want to do and you felt helpless and they laughed and they snickered and sometimes you're on the job and they snicker and continue to do stuff. But I want you to know if you put your trust in God and continue to be loyal and faithful to your job and your position, God will see you if you do what's right. Remember Joseph was a slave, but Joseph continued to do right and God slowly elevated him because I want you to know all it takes is one. He had a band of brothers that was against him. There were other people who were over him, but all it took was one person for God to lay a dream in the heart of Pharaoh that he needed to seek someone to interpret it. He had it all figured out perfectly. Joseph continued to be loyal in his cell. Joseph continued to be continued to work diligently and to do well, even though he had been sold. And at that moment, all it took was one person. And I want you to know all it takes is one person. All it's going to take is one person to decide to look back at this case. All it's going to take is one person to decide to look back at how the paperwork was done. All it's going to take is one person, guys. And I want you to know whenever God doesn't allow you to go back to that thing, it's because he wants you to look ahead for something new. Sometimes you can't get what God has for you. You can't see the treasures and the beautiful things that he has ahead for you because you're looking back at the ram shack and the shackles and you're going through the carnage and you're picking up the broken pieces. And God is saying, I want to take you higher. 
You need to let go because sometimes your hurt and your pain can become your precious. It could be something that you're holding on to that you want to see vengeance more than you want God. And sometimes you want to blame God and say, Lord, why did you allow this to happen? But I want you to know that man has a will. God already spoke to his or her heart before they betrayed you. God spoke to that pastor before he did what he did. God spoke into the conscience of that boss, that supervisor, the friend, whoever he spoke to them, but they, tr- they override, they, 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 they ignored it and did what they wanted to do. But I want you to know that your vengeance will be through God, not through your hand. And sometimes your vengeance don't come because you have been doing little deceitful and evil things to satisfy your flesh. You've been doing things, not allowing him to see his child, not because he's a threat, but because you're hurt. All these different things, you've been doing little things and calling up their job. And God is not going to move in that. Because when you do that, now you're allowing the powers of darkness to fuel, to to, to, to fuel you to do things that's wrong and God is not going to move. Sometimes you end up in a worse thing. You're doing all the stuff and now you get caught up and you're trying to make phone calls and do sneaky things under anonymous numbers and you don't know technology going to catch you. You don't know that no matter how good technology is and what kind of burner phone you got and oh how far out of town you were when you did it, there who sees you, the unseen, and Satan will use you to do wrong and expose you. He will be the same sin that that the same sin you follow to do wrong will be the same sin that sits on that court, sit on that stand and point you out and say, that was him. That was her. We were there. We did it. That's him, your honor. That's her, your honor. That's how that works. God is not blind and he will avenge you. God is not blind. He will right the wrongs that's been done to you. God is not blind just because somebody is in the grave and the person just walking around and looking like they got away with murder. They got away with hurting this person. Understand that God sends the avenger and that avenger follows and follows and follows and is going to carry out the very command that it's been given by God. You cannot sow apples and and expect that you're going to get lemons. You can't sow evil and expect to get good. And you can't fool God by doing a bunch of nice things while you continue to hold somebody captive with your lies. You continue to keep that lie in place. You can't get away with things. There are celebrities out there. They're doing all kinds of wrong. Just go and sleep with somebody's husband and take them. And it's just okay. They get a pass. People know it's wrong. But this is a celebrity. This is a professional athlete. This is this person. This is that person. Oh, it's different. You see that they live a whole different life. They commit crimes and do things and they walk in the prisons or they walk in the jailhouse without any handcuffs on or to the front or they're going off in their limos and they're being whisked off. You see this injustice that's going on all the time and everybody forgets and everybody forgets because, oh, this is a great singer. Oh, this is a great actor. Oh, this person is so great and they're so rich and they do all these great things and build houses for the children and all the little children running around in Tibet and they're doing this and they're doing that and they're knitting little blankets by hand for the orphans. But God is not stupid. God is not blind. God sees what they've done. And in this life, you see them just whisking off with somebody else's husband or wife on their arm and oh, they're so cute. But God has not forgotten. God has not forgotten. And oh, they may never see it in this life, but it awaits them in eternity because they won't say they're wrong. I was wrong. There's a lot of people like that. They use their power and their position that God has given them. He's given them the ability to learn and to understand, to comprehend things and to be successful in their lives. And they use their success to oppress other people. They use their success to torment those who works for them. They use their success to cheat people that's underneath them. They mistreat their housekeepers. They mistreat their staff. They keep people at work just in, in, in on on reasonable times they work people to death they sell products that's not good and take people in charge of much for it and lie god sees it people that owns businesses doing wrong doing dirty god bless them allow them to be able to have a business and they mistreat their patrons they disrespect people they do what they want to do they sell them faulty goods they don't pay people properly they torment and hurt people they take out their frustrations on 
on their staff, but God sees it and God is going to move. Your job is to continue to pray, go to work on time, do the things that you need to do. But I'm here to tell you, he's going to, he is going to avenge you. He is going to take, he is going to carry out his vengeance on people who has done wrong and evil and think that they can cover up that stink and cover up all the dead men bones and walk around looking like whitewashed tombs and inside there's stink and inside there's garbage and inside there's carnage and they think that they can just God's gonna forget God has never forgotten what they did and this is not a message of hate but it's reality it's not a, a message to to pro promote happiness over anyone getting God's vengeance. But so you know that God has not forgotten you because David was a man after God's own heart and he loved the Lord. David was a great man, but David made a great, a grave error and he repented before God, but yet, and still the sword of God was through David's house. And if you read the Bible in order, you'll see the horrible things that happen in David's life. And he will tell you because of the sin of David against Uriah, just because you say, I'm sorry. And you fasted and you prayed does not mean that the perpetual consequences of that action is not going to happen. And God knows when you go into somebody else's home and you pull out the father, the mother out of the family and you do stuff and people get kicked out and you move in and you do all these things and you're doing all this stuff. Oh, those things will not go untouched. God is a just God and he will have to listen. He will have to take take heed to the tr the cries of your child. He is going to take heed to the cry of your wife or your husband. He is going to take heed to the mother that you oppress at the job. He is going to take heed to the children who have to be left home alone because the mother has to go to work on Saturday and she was supposed to only work a few hours, but because you are the boss, you made her do certain things because you're angry. You deny them leaves. You do all of that. God sees it and he's going to correct you. For what you've done. He's going to correct them. For the things that they have done to you. And don't sleep on God. Just because something takes a long time to come. That lets you know how horrible it's going to be. And God has given them a chance to get it right. And some people God is like. I know you ask forgiveness. But this is. I am God and I am just. And I must avenge the cause of this person. You may not die like it would have as I intended, you may not be in a wheelchair as it would have been, but this must happen and you must humble yourself and have it and, and hold on to my, hold on to me and stay at my feet and ride out the consequences for your actions. Because in due time, while it may be harsh, you will not be broken. And then there are others who just continue, just continue on. Just happy, throwing it in your face, doing whatever, laughing, just doing whatever with you. And you are going to see that person get completely snapped in half by the hand of God. And whether you see it in this life or not, God will still move for you. And remember, there's some people that have done so many things throughout their lives that God is going, oh no, there's nothing in this world. We are beyond any sort of, of, of repercussions in this world. This person has been alive for a long time and they've hurt a lot of people throughout their lives. They've been doing this a long time. You see, you may only know of your situation, but God knows the things that they have done for a long time, the things, the way he has tried to pull them in to stop them, the way he has spoken to their heart many times and they continue to ignore. So God is at the point that your he, the only thing that will be fit for them is eternal damnation and torment. That's their end. And you may think, well, why God, won't you just kill him right now? Nope. God knows what he's doing, but you must understand that they have a end that is coming. That is horrible that you will never see. But God realized that nothing in this world, all the stops and all the red flags and all the bumpers that I put in this life to stop them, all the, the potholes, all the tire punchers I put to stop them, to talk to them, all the prison or, or, or all the, the near misses they've had. And they've been suspended and they've been to jail and they've been even to prison in some cases. And they just 
just continue and continue and continue. God is saying, okay, the only thing that's left is for them to under to uh, to undergo some sort of supernatural and and hell experience. That's going to be it. Their next stop is the depths of hell. Their next stop is the grave. And so you look at them and think, oh, they're just having a good time. But no, they're simply on they're on that path. They're on that path. They're on that path. And they will then be in the depths, in the pits of hell, experiencing the torment for what they've done to you and other people. And most importantly, because they chose to defy God. Because you got to understand when people do evil against you, when they sin against you and they do the wicked things that they do, they first defy God. They first defy God and they go against God and they ignore God and they ignore their conscience to do the things that they want to do. And I want to tell you that if they don't care about God, they're not going to care about you. If they don't respect him, they're not going to respect you. If they don't take heed to his voice, they're not going to take heed to you. But you need to just be still and know that God is God. He's going to avenge you. He's going to bring vengeance is his and nothing that anyone does and just walk away smiling and thinking it's okay. God has not closed out that case and he's going to take care of you. He's going to avenge you. He is going to bring justice in the face of injustice. Injustice. Don't think because you buried your child that God is not just. Don't think because someone's behind bars and they didn't do anything that God is not just. He is going to move. He's going to do the things that he needs to do. Don't think because they lived happily ever after that God is not just because he's going to do it. Don't think because now you see them signing the books and the materials and living in and making money off of the things that you created and the work that you did and took it for themselves. Don't think that God is not just. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't lean on to your own understanding and all your ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. God is a God of love. God is a God of mercy and grace. God is a God of kindness. Understand that. But you don't forget he's also a God of wrath and he is a just judge. God bless.